Dear friends, there have been times when it was difficult for me to pray. During these times, I was discouraged and low in my spirit. And so I did the only thing I could, and that was to pray the scriptures. I would like to share with you one of the psalms I would pray during these times. It's a psalm of praise and thanks to God. And so Psalm 92 verse 1 to 15 says, It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands, I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. The stupid man cannot know. The fool cannot understand this that though the wicked sprout like grass and all evildoers flourish, they are doomed to destruction forever. But you, O Lord, are on high forever. For behold, your enemies, O Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All evildoers shall be scattered. But you have exalted my horn like that of the wild ox. You have poured over me fresh oil. My eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the doom of my evil assailants. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Our prayer as children of God should be, Lord, give me a heart that's filled with gratitude, a heart that will never overlook the blessings that you have given me. So count your blessings. God's love is consistent. His mercy is consistent. His kindness is consistent and this is the reason enough for you to have a heart of gratitude there are two life lessons that i've learned over the years and i would like to share these with you the first to begin with let me tell you that time is precious how you spend your time matters what you spend your time doing it matters. Who you spend your time with matters. And the thing is, I never realized until recently just how much the Bible talks about the importance of time or the use of our time. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. When you appreciate time and have the understanding that each of our days is numbered, that is when you develop wisdom in your heart. If you read Romans chapter 13, from verse 9 to 11, the Bible tells you not to leave any debt outstanding, not to commit adultery, not to steal, not to covet, but instead to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And it sums all of this up in verse 11, as it says, besides this, you know the time, that the hour has come 
for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. Listen, there should be an urgency about time in our lives as believers. We only have so much time to get our lives together. The second lesson that life has taught me from personal experience and also from watching others is that not every storm, not every crisis, not every challenge or problem is bad for you. What I mean is that some situations we encounter, yes, they'll be difficult, they will be painful, but in the long run, that storm, it will be for your good. That crisis will work out for your good. That challenge will make you stronger. You see, someone will get sick, but recover in such a way that they can only acknowledge the hand of God, the miracle working power of the blood of Jesus. Someone's plans will get disrupted only to find that that disruption led them to a better destination. Someone's plans will get delayed. But that's perhaps God's way of saying, Not yet. I have something better in store. I have a better time in mind. Every crisis in life is not bad for you. Sometimes God uses adversity. God places you in tough situations only for you to grow. For you to develop stronger faith. For you to mature. So the next time a problem presents itself, the next time you face a crisis, just stop for a moment and ask God, what do you want me to learn from this? What do you want to develop within me? And so now let us pray. Lord, be praised and honored. Father, I thank you for being a wonderful and merciful God. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would teach us how to number our days. Teach us to be wise with our time here on earth. Lord, lead me to be wise about how I spend my time. Lead us to be wise with what we spend our time doing on this earth. Help us to realize what truly matters. What matters is my relationship with you, Jesus. What matters is building and storing up treasures in heaven. What matters is to testify about your goodness and to tell as many living souls as I can about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, help me not to chase after the riches and pleasures of this world, because what will it profit us to gain the world but lose our souls. It's of no benefit to make gains in this world at the expense of our souls. Lord, your word says in Romans 13, verse 14, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Help us to clothe ourselves with robes of righteousness and prayer. Help us to clothe ourselves in the full armor of God. Lord, give us the strength to make no provision for the flesh. Help us, King Jesus, to remain steadfast and never to even think about gratifying the flesh and its improper desires. But instead, give us a desire that is drawn to your presence, a desire that is drawn to spending time in your presence. Father, I truly praise you for all that you have brought me through. I praise you for the lessons that you have taught me through each and every storm. Lord, I thank you for bringing me through life's adversity and challenges. Through every storm, may you develop my character. Through every crisis, I pray that you will strengthen my faith. Through every challenge or problem, may I become a more mature believer. Philippians 3, 12 through 14 says, Not that I have already obtained this, or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own. 
because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, as we press on, as we strain forward and run this race of faith. Give us grace, Father. The grace to endure those uncomfortable lessons. The grace to hold on and never lose sight of your promises. Father, give us the grace to understand that sometimes the answer to our prayers may be delayed, but that does not mean that they are denied. God, give us grace to understand that sometimes you might say no to our request because you have something better and bigger in store for us. Should we experience any disruption in our lives, may we understand that at times this disruption may be divine disruption. You may intervene in our plans in order to guide us to a certain destination or in a particular direction. But regardless of how uncomfortable the process may be, we will continue to trust in you. We'll continue to believe in you and to have faith in you. Your word in James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. It says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete lacking in nothing father work in me lord help me to remember that when my faith is tested you are working to produce a good work within me Lord, I bless your name, and I thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. The stupid man cannot know. The fool cannot understand this. That though the wicked sprout like grass and all evildoers flourish, they are doomed to destruction forever. But you, O Lord, are on high forever. For behold, your enemies, O Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All evildoers shall be scattered. But you have exalted my horn like that of the wild ox. You have poured over me fresh oil. My eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the doom of my evil assailant. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green to declare that the Lord is upright he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness 
in him.